Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we're back with the Google Pixel 6a because I've got a fun project I want to try out on this and that is sending and receiving text messages to and from the International Space Station as it orbits overhead. This will not involve the internet or a cellular network. We're going to use amateur radio frequencies to do this communication and the phone here should be able to do all of the interpretation of the data that comes down from the orbiting platform, which will be overhead just for a very short period of time. And we're gonna get into this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Google sent the phone to the channel free of charge for my review a few weeks ago. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. They are not paying for this video, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And all the other radio gear that we'll be taking out are things that I purchased with my own funds. So let's get into it now and see if we can send some data back and forth to the International Space Station. Now the Pixel 6a phone here will be the hub of this activity. We are running an app called APRS Droid. And what this app does is interprets data packets that are formatted via the APRS protocol. This is actually a very old technology, but it's still very much in use by amateur radio operators to communicate with each other via short text messages. And it's also used to communicate locations of things and people should you ever have an emergency that takes out local infrastructure. So for example, a fire department can have an APRS beacon on the truck and you don't need a cellular network to figure out where the fire trucks are and people can uh, very efficiently communicate without much infrastructure beyond a bunch of radios. It's a very robust platform. Definitely check out the APRS website to learn more about it. There's a lot to it, but we're gonna be using it for uh, our communications today. And the Droid app here will receive those messages and send those messages. So for example, this is one that came from a local repeater station not all that long ago. And it's got basic information about where that repeater station is located along with a short message here at the top. And I can also pull up a map here to see where that is. And hopefully if we're able to get a bunch of messages from the space station, we'll see that map populate as things go on. I am also going to send a message up to the space station and I'm going to be clicking this button to do that. And this is the sound that the phone will generate and push through the radio. This very much works like the old modems used to work where you have audio that gets demodulated into data. And this is what uh, the packet system relies upon for all of this communication. And what'll happen is that once the space station comes overhead, uh, we will start hearing these packets come down and hopefully, again, those will pop up here on the screen and we can read them. Now there are two radio stations on the ISS. In a previous video, we talked about the voice station where you can talk to other people on the ground through the space station. And very frequently, some of the astronauts have been popping on to say hello to people on the ground as well, which is pretty cool. But we're going to be using the data radio today, which is what they use for packet operations. And it's going to be operating at 145.825 megahertz, both for transmitting and receiving. And in order for this to work, the space station has to be visible uh, to you on the ground, not necessarily with your eyes, but at least with your radio. And today at 1.52 p.m., about an hour from the time I'm recording this video, the space station is going to be directly overhead according to heavensabove.com, which is a great opportunity for us because we should be able to make a contact while it's directly overhead without too much complexity. And to figure out where it is in the sky, I've got this little app here called Satellite Tracker. I think this is from one of those astronomy uh, application makers. And right now I've got it pointed towards the ground because the station is on the other side of the earth at the moment. But what I'll be able to do here as the station uh, orbits overhead is angle this up towards the sky to see exactly where it is in the sky so I can get the antenna pointed in the right direction. And one of the cool things you can do on Android, of course, are split screen operations here. So if I go out to here, and what I'm gonna do is just do this. I'm gonna hit uh, this and split this on the top and then select the other app here. And I can actually run both of these things simultaneously. So while we're receiving messages, I can keep track of where the station might be in the sky. And what I'll do is record the screen so you can see uh, all of this operating as we're going through. And if all works out well, we'll see a lot of messages kind of flying through, including maybe a few messages to us directly. Now, of course, the phone cannot send and receive radio signals on its own. You do need a radio for that. 
and we're going to use a pretty inexpensive one today. This is a Baofeng BF-F8HP. This is their mid-range radio. It costs about 70 bucks. It can transmit at around 8 watts or so, which is adequate for reaching the station. And if you're just listening, you can actually get their entry-level model that costs about $29. Now, what's really cool about these little radios is that if you just point their little rubber duck antennas in the direction of where the space station is in the sky, many times you can pick up both the voice repeater and the data repeater as the station orbits overhead. And in order to interface it with the phone, uh, we have a couple other things that I had to get here. This is a cable for this radio called the BTEC APRS V01. And this plugs into the side of the radio here. And what it will do is uh, take the audio signals from the phone and either put them through the radio's output or take the audio coming into the radio and send it back to the phone. And the biggest challenge here was finding the right adapter because the Pixel 6a does not have a headphone jack, so we had to get the right uh, USB-C connector here. This is from Anchor. This is their USB-C to headphone adapter. This is a little more expensive than some of the other ones you see out there, but it's the only one that I could find that would actually work. And what we're going to do is just plug this in like so and then pop it into the phone itself. If you have a phone with a headphone jack, uh, you should be able to attach this cable directly and get everything working. And you'll have to adjust the volume, of course, manually on the radio a little bit to get everything figured out. And for the most part, that's all you need to receive. Now to transmit, you need a few more things. The most important thing before you push that button is to get an amateur radio license. If you transmit on one of these radios and you're not licensed, you could be subject to a fine or even jail. And here in the US, that is a federal offense, not one you wanna get on your record. So definitely take the time to get your license if you do want to transmit. You can listen all you want, but transmitting is going to take the license and be sure you have one before you push the button. Additionally, to reach the station, we need a slightly larger antenna. This is an aero antenna designed specifically for satellite communications. It's not a dish, as you can see, and it's handheld, so we can just point it in the direction that the station will be in, and the station should be able to hear us uh, with this antenna. In fact, in prior experiments with this new repeater on the station that's doing the data, I've been able to hit the station every time it's been in range. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if I can get it to work now with the phone. So without further ado, let's head on outside and get all this stuff set up and see if we can reach the station as it orbits overhead. All right, so we're about 10 minutes away from the ISS coming above the horizon. If I look on my app right now, I can see it uh, just below there right now, coming up this way. And so what's going to happen is the ISS is going to come up this way, go right overhead, and then continue its orbit in that direction. Now what I have up here is my other radio tuned to the same frequency. So when I hit a transmit button, we should be able to hear my signal go out, and my radio was able to get that signal properly, so that was good. And we'll also be able to hear on this radio when things are overhead because when this one is attached, I'm not going to hear anything. And then, of course, we have to keep this antenna pointed in the right direction as things are going on here. And I think I should only just have to point it straight up when everything gets into uh, the spot I hope to get the best results with. Also, what I'm going to do here on my other phone is monitor the ARIS.net website, which gives us a real-time view as to what signals are being sent back from the station to listening stations on the ground. So we'll know pretty quickly if we were able to hit the station as it orbits overhead. Okay, so we are now at a spot where I think we might have a good opportunity here. So I'm going to start sending some packets. You want to be not too chatty on this because there's a limited number of opportunities for other people to get in. So what we're going to do here is send one right now, and then I'm going to wait for it to get a little bit higher in the sky, and then send another one. And we did just, though, get a, a packet from the station. And as you can see, we just got one here from two of them now have come in. So we're going to start sending mine out here and see if we can uh, hit it. So these two packets actually came from space. And this is what happens. It just kind of comes in like, like the sun rising, and you suddenly get a flurry of activity, and then it all just kind of drops away as the station goes away. So right now we are getting to a much higher height here and we are in a really good spot now. So I th think we probably got picked up by the station. So let's go back to our phone here. And not yet, although I think we may have just gotten a message from somebody through the station. We did. So we actually had somebody contact us directly 
and we'll take a look here and see uh, what it says here. So he just is asking for a QSL and I'm going to say QSO and I'm going to give him my location here which is FM 31 and I'm going to send that up to the space station and hopefully he receives that and we'll be able to put it in our logbook that we talk to somebody. All right, if we go over to the list of stations here, you'll see that my call sign is popping up, KC1RGS, and that means that the repeater on the station got our signal and sent it back down to the ground. And we knew that worked before because we did get a direct message from somebody, but this is further confirmation that we were able to successfully communicate using a smartphone, a radio, and an antenna through the International Space Station. All right, we are back inside now, and I thought I would do a little debrief so you can see exactly what just transpired. These ISS passes are very challenging because you have a very limited window and you're trying to make as many contacts as possible during that span of time. You will always find people trying to communicate with each other through the space station whenever it's overhead, and today was no exception. Now, our phone here picked up four uh, different stations transmitting and if we go to our map here you can see where they're all located so we had one as far south as Virginia here and then there was somebody actually in my home state of Connecticut uh, maybe about an hour's drive away here so that's pretty neat and if we go back here to the list of stations I'll select the one that messaged me directly and you can see that we heard five different messages through the space station into my radio and then decoded here on the phone. And if we go over to that website we were looking at outside, you can see here all the communication that the space station received from my station. So all of these here where KC1RGS is on the left are packets that were received and then these are the packets that were sent to me. Now what's interesting is that we did not hear from back from him after we sent him my location. But as it turns out, he actually did respond to the message that I sent him. It just didn't get to my radio. It could be that I was transmitting at the same time he was. A whole bunch of things could have contributed to that. But somebody on the ground picked up his acknowledgement to me. And what 7-3 means is basically like, hey, thank you, goodbye. You know, it's like the goodbye greeting. So it looks like we had a successful contact there where I put my call sign out to the space station. The space station beamed it back to Earth. This guy picked it up and then sent an acknowledgement back up to the station, received by my phone. I replied to him and he got it. And that was the acknowledgement there. I sent him my wrong map grid location. So I looked him up on uh, one of the amateur radio websites and sent him an email to correct it. And just a quick addendum, as I was getting ready to upload this video, I had checked my physical mailbox and in it was this postcard from the individual that we were communicating with via the ISS. This is called a QSL card, which is a physical card you mail to somebody when you've had a successful contact. And as you can see here, he's acknowledging the time and the frequency, how we were communicating, and in this case, the satellite we were communicating through, which was the ISS. Very, very cool. There you go, a successful contact using a smartphone, in this case, a Pixel 6a, and a pretty inexpensive radio. And again, if you have one of those rubber duck antennas, just point it and listen, and you might be able to pick up something from the space station yourself. Just remember to get your license before you push that transmit button. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.